is so harmful that that story that we need to always have snacks never be hungry it's killing us literally killing us and killing our children too it's reducing the lifespan of our children decades later what it's doing is telling our children's body and our body that we have no adversity we have a bounty okay and a bounty means that our bodies don't bother protecting ourselves against diseases and aging okay our bodies are always looking at the environment are we under a threat is it adversity if yes our bodies will put the energy into survival we go into survival mode we turn over proteins we protect our dna we lower inflammation we improve our memory we increase blood flow that is survival today's world largely driven by food companies is to sell products is they've convinced us that we need to eat at breakfast and then a snack and then lunch and snacks <laughs> this yeah. is making people a lot of money but it's killing us and in fact breakfast is the most important meal of the day was an advertising campaign by post cereal in the united states this is a lie now some people need breakfast but then they don't need a big dinner and some people like me like dinner but i don't need a big breakfast in fact you can train your body within a matter of weeks to not feel hungry at all our bodies make sugar itself right our liver is a glucose manufacturing plant so i i measure my sugar on uh most days and what i can see is that my body maintains a very healthy steady level of sugar that i need to not feel hungry instead what we're doing with our diet is in the morning we have a pretty big meal we get a lot of fat and sugar in our bodies the body says i have to get this out of the bloodstream makes insulin it gets sucked out and by about 11 o'clock in the morning the body has overcompensated and now our bodies are lacking sugar it's overshot and now our bodies oh my goodness i'm out of sugar i need more so we feel hungry then we have this you know have a bar a sugar a protein bar just to make up for that addiction to sugar it goes back up then we eat lunch after lunch we have this brain fog it is a a vicious cycle of our bodies having too much energy then feeling like it's not having enough and that's because we're always eating if you fast like i do and wim hof does just try it for a few weeks substitute with tea with water do anything you know, have a, have a, have a few nuts but try to skip at least one meal a day and see what happens but give it time because it doesn't happen overnight you will eventually within maybe a week to two you will no longer feel hungry and in fact you, you what might even feel sick if you have a big meal because your body now has adjusted to what is a, a natural human way to eat humans are not built to eat three meals a day do you think that the cavemen or cave people were sitting around at breakfast thinking, what are we going to eat for lunch? And then at lunch, <laughs> what are we going to eat for dinner? Meals are not designed for planning the next meal in a few hours. It's really not that way. We would eat when we got food and there'd be a lot of periods where we were not eating. And religions have discovered that this is very healthy and clears the mind. And the societies that fast tend to live longer. And so it's so important that we don't give in to this, you know, this uh advertising that we should never feel hungry um really it's the way we should be living um and the also important thing is that when you're not eating as much like i do you can actually eat a bigger meal at the end of the day i have really wonderful dinners and a lot of calories to make up but i also make sure they're very nutritious they're mostly plant-based um or nut based uh, with full of vitamins and a lot of fresh food as well. And that way I'm getting these xenohormetan molecules like resveratrol, but similar plants make hundreds of these. And when you eat these plants, particularly stressed plants that are grown organically or ones that aren't just grown in a greenhouse with lots of food, so look for foods that have a lot of color because the colors are indicating that these xenohormetan molecules are in there. Blueberries are a good example, but unfortunately, if they're mass produced, they're given lots of water, lots of nutrients, and they don't make as many nutrients and these survival molecules. Another way to think of this, and, and I, I find this useful, is do we want our bodies to be 
an, in an abundant state or an adversity state. So I would say most of the time we want to mimic adversity. Go for a run, or at least go for a walk, pick up some weights, don't eat all the time, skip a meal or two, be cold, be hot, get in a sauna. This puts your body in the survival mode, adversity mode. Modern, the modern world is the abundance mode. You can have abundance, you can have some protein if you need it, that's okay. As long as you spend some time in adversity to allow your body to repair itself and replace old proteins and old parts of the body. And that will allow you to you know, live ostensibly a life that is slow aging rather than rapid aging.